for another episode of the Blue Mountain Mix podcast. My name is Mary Lynn and I'm coming to you guys as always from the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia where I live with my husband, my three dogs, and my chickens. Um, today is a super casual episode as you can see by the sloppy bun and t-shirt. I'm just living my best life up in here. Um, this is the second time that I have filmed this podcast. I filmed it a couple days ago and I finished it and was going to edit it and just realized I was very negative. I was in a very negative headspace. I had a lot of things that I've kept on hold that I, I needed to frog and I shared those things and I just, I think I was very sad about a lot of stuff towards the end of it. So I decided to go ahead and frog all those things and I'm starting fresh. So I've got some new projects. I feel much better today. I figure the world has enough negativity in it as it is. I don't need to be bringing any more of that to the internet. So Yes, today we are starting fresh. So I'm just hanging out, keeping it relaxed, and I hope that you can join me in the relaxed vibes here today. Got my Halloween cup, I'm prepared, I'm ready. I'm ready for fall, I'm a little sweaty today. The weather's been so much nicer here. It's, oh gosh, it was so hot in the beginning of August, but it has really cooled down in the past weeks. I have my windows open so you may hear crickets, birds, passing cars. I did close this one, so fingers crossed it's not too bad. So today, I only have one finished object, and it is da -da -da -da, right behind me. I have finished my Cinnabar Shawl by Andrew Mowry, and it's upside down. <laughs> this is a top-down, gorgeous, beautiful, fantastic shawl. As I said, by Andrew Mowry, half of it is brioche, and the other half is, I don't really know what you would call this. I call it double knitting. Because you knit, since you knit each brioche line back and forth per side, you also have to do the same thing for the knit side. So it gives it this really like, it looks like it's really dense, but it's not. But since you knit each line twice, front side twice, reverse side twice, it just gives it this really interesting texture. Um, yarns I used, the gray is Wool of the Andes Sport, and then the color gradient is chroma yes chroma fingering weight version which i have used on other projects and i really like it the pattern calls for um spin cycle yarns and i'm too cheap to buy that so i think that this is a really good alternative it has a nice gradual color shift to it it's really nice to work with i will say i am not a huge fan of the wool of the andes I have purchased it before, but not ever like finished a project with it until this one. It's pretty, pretty itchy. Like this does not feel nice. This part feels good because of the chroma in it. The chroma is very soft, but the wool of the Andes by itself is not for me. I don't think I'll purchase it again. As I was knitting with it, you know, you try it on as you go. I was really hoping it would soften up in blocking. And I've only blocked it the one time. So I might try soaking it again just to see if maybe a longer soak will help soften that up, but it is very itchy. It's very itchy around my neck when I wear it. Maybe I'll try folding it. Ugh. Anyways, I've worn it a couple times already. I went to the lake last weekend and it's a little chilly at nighttime, so it's all wrapped up in this and it looks gorgeous. And because it's so toothy, it really like holds. It doesn't like fall off. Well, it doesn't fall off very easily, but it's, oh God, this is itchy. This is itchy. And then where it hits like my elbow crease, of course it's the wool of the Andes and the creases. So those are itchy and it's a real shame because this is so beautiful and I love it. I love this pattern. I've already, full disclosure, ordered more yarn to make another one. <laughs> but I'm gonna use, still gonna use the Chroma, but I'm gonna do a, um, I think the color, this color is Dragon Lily. And I think the one that I picked out is called Vermont. And it's it kind of looks like a sunrise or a sunset on a lake. It's got blues, oranges, a little bit of red, but it, it, they're very toned down. So I'm gonna do that with some alpaca wool blend from Drops that I ordered that hopefully will be here today in the mail. I haven't ordered the Chroma yet. I'm kind of hoping it'll go on sale. I don't think it will. Crochet.com has not had very good sales lately. They've switched to this, like, you get one line 
that's X percentage off for the whole month and they are owned by Nitpicks. So Nitpicks has one line on sale and crochet.com has a different one. Right now it's Swish, it's all 20% off. So if you like Swish, go get that, but I'm not, I don't need Swish, it's kind of expensive. But yeah, this is regular price. The Chroma is like $12.99, a ball for 100 grams. So it's not bad, but I do like a good deal. So I'm waiting till September 1st. If it hasn't gone down in price, I'm just gonna order it because I need more Cinnabar shawls in my life. I do love it. It wears easily, it's comfortable, it's a good size. 10 out of 10. If you've been eyeballing them and you're thinking, boy, oh boy, do I need it? You do. Just make it. It's gorgeous. And I love it. So yeah, that's my one and only finished object for this week. I started a lot of things. I started a lot of things. I frogged a lot of things. I put a lot of things on hold. Um, one thing that I did finally just rip out was my Soldatna that I had talked about. I'll insert a picture. Took a picture before I killed it. It's so sad. Bright side. The colors that I've chosen out of my stash worked super well. They're gorgeous together. Um, I really like the yarns. They're working up really well. The pattern's easy to follow and it makes an absolutely gorgeous finished product. But <sighs> I don't know what I, well, I do know what I did. I swatched technically, but I did not swatch in the round which does make a difference and it was too small and then I pulled it off my needles and I, you know put the yoke on and I was like surely I can make this work now I need to go up a needle size at least and possibly up another like garment size so it's okay it's a good practice I was really bummed to rip all that out but it is all 100% wool yarn so I'll just fit spice it back together it won't be a big deal that's where we're at with that. Then I started the Brioche Delicious Shawl by Andrea Mowry using Drops Alpaca yarn, which was so luxuriously soft and fantastic. And I'm sure, I know it grows and it's already a really big crescent shaped shawl. So I have a feeling that thing's gonna be huge by the time it's done and worn. But I made it through, so you do like a garter section and then a brioche section, then a garter section, blah, blah, blah. And you have three sections that you do the brioche. So I had made it through the first garter and the first brioche. And I went to go do my second garter section and realized that I had not paid any attention to the directions in my first garter section. And so what's supposed to be this really nice flowing crescent, I didn't have enough increases. You're supposed to increase there's a knit front back row and then there's a knit front back front on the next row. And I blew past the knit front back front section completely. So I was only doing knit front back, knit straight, knit front back, knit straight. And it, by the time I added that brioche and I did the brioche section correctly, it was really bunched up at the top. And so as I was filming the last version of this podcast, I was holding it up and I was like, I can make this work, right? Sure, I don't wanna have to rip it out, blah, blah, blah. And by the end of it, by the end of me convincing myself, I was like, you have to rip this out. I wasn't that far along, not that big of a deal. Um, I don't know if I have that yarn handy to show you, but I'm using white. I'm trying to replicate her colors. So I'm using white for the main color, then a section of yellow brioche, and then blue and red, I think is the order that goes in. And the drops, the drops colors aren't exactly what I thought they would be, um, but they're close and it's not bad. The blue is a little more blue than I expected, but it's gonna be fine. And it's super snuggly and soft, so I'm all about that. So that was my second oopsie. <laughs> my third oopsie is my Alpenglow sweater. So let's talk about that for a minute. Um, I am going to Rhinebeck this year for the first time ever. And I'm very excited. That was spooky. Hold on. Sorry, I don't know what that was. Just a weird, I don't know if you could hear it, weird banging noise. Checked my dogs, everybody's fine. Anyway, so going to Rhinebeck. First time ever, very excited. Uh, a couple things have already happened with this trip. <laughs> uh, first off, I got a text the other night. I booked a stay in it, like an Airbnb. Um, that's Katie, my golden retriever. She's very worried about something. 
anyways booked to stay at an airbnb um apartment last month or the month before last um i i felt like i was kind of waiting till the last minute and i i i don't know so i booked it and obviously prices are a little bit through the roof because everybody up there knows that it's run back weekend and people come in from all over so i got a steal on this place it was like 86 dollars a night which is so cheap so i was really excited well i just get this text this past saturday just randomly oh by the way your booking's been canceled i was like uh no <laughs> no no explanation just it's been canceled we'll refund it so eventually she the, the owner sent me she didn't even really send me a message she sent it to she had to add something for the refund and she was like oops sorry double booked it my bad I'm like oh oops took you a month to figure it out oh i was so stressed out and then i was trying to find a place to stay obviously and sure enough that place popped right back up oh it's available for your dates i'm like is it though no so i ended up paying twice literally twice the price to stay in another apartment I'm staying in Poughkeepsie I'm just gonna drive up to Rhinebeck <sighs> I don't know but anyway so that having been said my Rhinebeck sweater this year I'm going with the Alpen Glow by Andrew Mowry which she just put out a couple weeks ago and I'm now on my second version of the Alpen Glow because oh I didn't swatch <laughs> and I know I know I know we all know we all know we all do it we all just uh, it's okay though it's okay so I stash dived and I pulled out um, a gray for the main color in fact I have to show you it's kind of sad the, I, all of this came from stash I was so proud of myself that I don't have to buy anything I just could just jump in and start working the gray is really the issue here. So this, even as I was knitting it, and I was like, this is this is basically a worsted weight yarn. Like, it's pretty much worsted. I think it's supposed to be a DK, but I don't believe it. And the pattern calls for um, sport weight. Whoopsies. So this is Diablo. Uh, it's like a mohair mix from hobby that I bought last year so I was excited to use that for the first time and the contrast which is not very contrasty is uh Barocco Melifiori Melif Melifiori light and it's gorgeous it's a beautiful color I bought a bunch of it because it was originally supposed to be a Find Your Fade by Andrew Mowry Made it through two, two skeins of this color, a skein of the color I went with in my second Alpen Glow, and then a blue. And you can't really fade variegated into variegated into variegated. And the blue didn't make any sense. So I ripped all that out, needless to say. So this is like really fuzzy and it's kind of been through the ringer already. Whoops. And I have to rip it out again. It's a really nice yarn. It's really gorgeous. It's got this really cool like metallic sheen to some of it. And I do really like it and I'm glad I want to use this for something but you can't even see where like you can only see it because of the light like where which I kind of liked I don't know I kept going back and forth I was like is this not enough contrast do I want a low contrast do I love it do I hate it I don't know well it turns out it's like super big so <sighs> that's after splitting it's it's way too big way too big I mean, I can almost wrap it all the way around myself. I know you can't see that, but yeah. So I worked on it quite a bit, trying to tell myself, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Obviously not fine. Took it off. <sighs> Here's my advice. Swatch. Second piece of advice. If you're not sure about it and you're not feeling right about it, just stop because you're not going to feel right about the finished project. So I have to rip this out. I don't want to. So be the third thing I ripped out in a couple of days. So I might ask my husband if he'll rip it out for me. <laughs> he'll probably look at me like I'm crazy, so we'll see. But on the bright side, the actual Alpen Glow that I am going with was also a stash buster. Why do I have so much stuff in my stash? I don't know. So the main color of this is another Barocco vintage. Vintage nice blue 
and it is I bought it at my local yarn store for a salty air tea which is a summer design by Samantha Guerin and I got into it and I was like why am I making a summer shirt out of wool it's so stupid I'm not gonna wear it so I scrapped that but bright side I had already started it in the round so I had my in the round swatch and I used that for this and I got a gauge it looks a little I'm a little worried it looks a little bit small on the yoke but I've tried it on it looks fine I've gotten a pretty decent amount of work done on it and I really like this color so this is the contrast is still that Melafiori light but it's a different colorway and the, I, there was some sections that I cut out like this blue is very similar to the blue that's in the you know like the main body of the sweater but this this gold color is gorgeous there's some green in it that comes out really pretty so for the most part it's fine and once you get into the body you just kind of it's like every 10 it's like a 10 row repeat that you have the contrast color just kind of tossed in there and I don't mind that it fades from like basically invisible to really contrasty that doesn't bother me I was more worried about the top part which I think looks really good and I like that it's shiny. And this feels more like an Alpenglow kind of look, in my opinion. So, this is Sanus Garn. No, BC Garn. Lies. BC Garn Samilla, I think, for the orange part. And then this is not Kid Silk. Yes, Kid Silk. Kid Silk Mohair from Drops. And then the Barocco Vintage DK. Oh, there goes the Roomba. Hold on. <laughs> this is going to be all cut up. <laughs> Serious technical difficulties today. My goodness. But anyways, so this is the new version of the Alpen Glow. I've got, you're supposed to have like eight, 8.75 inches of body before you start the two color um, ribbing. I've made quite a bit of progress, I think. And I'm going to be interested to see how this blocks out. Uh, I did make sure to be pretty generous with my floats as far as picking them up. I don't go more than three stitches, no, four stitches at the most. But even then, I, I mean, I left like a lot of room. So there's plenty of stretchiness in this bad boy. But yeah, my husband said, wow, that's very blue. And I said, very observant, honey. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> uh, it's usually one of those things. Like if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. It's like, well, you don't have to wear it. I do. Yes, this is my Rhinebeck project. Watch it be hot and I won't be able to wear this. <laughs> so, yeah, Alpen Glow. I'm very much pleased with this one. The other one just needs to go somewhere. Bless its heart. Um, what else have I started working on? Oh, very briefly. So, we were going to go on vacation next month in September to... Florida. And then it was like, oh, do we go to Florida? Do we go to North Carolina? Blah, blah. I want to be able to swim in the ocean. Well, my husband's already been with his family to North Carolina because his dad has a place down there um, in July. So he wasn't very keen on going back there. Florida, the rates were good one day, then they were high the next. And we waited till the last minute. So now they're like super high. Plus it's hurricane season. Eh, you know, I, I would hate to book everything and then have just be out a bunch of money because the storm blew through. So we are going to Maine. <laughs> but when I thought we were going to the beach, I started a Jesse made my first ever Jesse made pattern. I have not done a whole lot on this. This has been card knitting. But this will eventually be the outline tape. Got it. Outline tape. Ta -da. So not, not a whole lot of progress. Just on the ribbing, it's a twisted rib. And then you do stock and head for like eight inches. So it, this is good mindless knitting. I took it to a birthday party um, Saturday night and just knit on it there. And it's, it, it comes from this. this I don't 100% know what this is. This was a Christmas gift last year. I do know it's uh, a yarn bee and it is a cotton nylon mix. It's very soft, um, but I lost the band a while ago. So 
not 100% sure what this is, but it's a hefty cake. So there's definitely gonna be plenty. And my thought was it's a bottom up top and my bathing suit bottoms are black. So I wanted the white contrast on the black bottoms faded up into the black shoulders. So I don't really need this anymore, but I still wanna make it. <laughs> Feels kind of silly. But it's really interesting. It's the uh, construction is just very basic. It's just knitting the round up until you split for the front and the back. And then at the end is when you drop that stitch that makes that outline all the way down. And I think that's really neat. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, hopefully will. I was watching the um, Tiny Human Knits podcast and she was wearing one. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, I have to have that. So yeah. This is my mindless pattern right now, just chunking away at it. Um, not much more to say about that. We'll see how it goes. But keep your fingers crossed for me because I don't want to rip anything else out. <laughs> uh, aside from that, and then my last whip is... So if you remember a couple of episodes ago, I finished my Lune shawl -da, by Natasha Hornby. And my friend wants me to make one for his sister for Christmas, so she wants a yellow one. Couple things about this so far, I'm very, I have not done a whole lot, but you will notice. So the, the way this is constructed is corner to corner for the top bit and then down for the mosaic at the bottom. Pick up a lot of stitches. So this, the original pattern calls for the star stitch, which is gorgeous, but it's a pain in the butt. And it takes a long time because you have to like knit three, pass one over, knit three, pass one over. And then on the back, you have to pick those passed over stitches back up. And this is a lot smaller than the intended shawl. Like a lot smaller. Like this is small enough that I'm not going to wear it around my shoulders. This is going to be like a neck scarf kind of deal because she's tiny. Just fine. It's still gorgeous. But... I didn't like doing that. It took me forever. I thought I was going through Ravelry and I saw somebody had mentioned in their notes that they subbed out a stitch. I don't know what's going on with this cord. Um, they subbed out seed stitch to still get that texture, but to make it a little bit easier to knit. And boy, oh boy, has this been easy. Don't have to think about it. You just go. So I'm still using the palette yarn that I use for mine because you know, it's my favorite. Fingering weight, 100% wool. Very stretchy, very nice. Blocks out great. Don't know what's going on there. Oh, crap. <laughs> Whoopsies. Yeah, a little bit of moss stitch put on there. Crap. Do I fix it? Probably not. That's how you know it's handmade. It's got a mistake in it. But anyways, point of this is, it's gonna be a lot bigger, like a lot bigger. So this is the, the same triangle size wise hello huge <laughs> it's like way bigger <laughs> but that's good because i felt like mine was a little bit small so i'm almost done with the first section and it's, it's such an easy pattern especially with the seed stitch yeah i got messed up there because you pick up on one side to you know obviously make the triangle Clearly, I was not paying attention when I, whatever. I could probably stitch in an extra, it's, yeah, whatever, it's fine. So yes, that's progress so far. Seed stitch still gives it that nice texture. I think it's gonna be nice. So working on that. I wanna finish the Alpen Glow before I really work too much on anything else, but this has been kind of like my, sometimes my wrists, um, hurt a little bit for some reason with this. I don't know if it's cause it's too tight of a gauge. I don't know, but they, they've been bothering me a little bit. So this has been my kind of relief project. Can you tell I'm getting hot? Oof, I have the fan on, but any old who. So that's that. The last thing I want to share with you guys is, um, kind of my project expectations, some yarn, yarn kind of things. Um, I am trying very hard to poke myself with this needle out, um, only buy yarn for things that I know what I'm going to make with it because I do have a lot of stuff in my stash. And a lot of times that comes from, 
I buy it with good intentions and then like the shawls I was telling you about, you know, it just doesn't work out to rip it out. So now I have four balls of yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with. So hold it, please. I'm going to be making a couple of sweaters I'm very excited about. I cannot tell you the names of them off the top of my head, but I will put in a picture and the name and it's going to be great. So these are the yarns I bought for the first one. It is a swancho. Has anybody ever heard of a swancho? Because I haven't. Sweater poncho. I don't know how I feel about it. I adore the yoke detail. Love it. I think it's gorgeous. I'm all about Halloween, ready for the spooky season, but I don't know if I'm gonna love how it looks on me. The swancho bit, I mean, because I feel like it's kind of weird. I think it looks fine with the yoke and like, it, you know, comes straight down from that, but I feel like it's really weird that you've got such a flowy thing and then fitted sleeves, so I don't know. I don't know. Some people... I think it has to be a swancho because of the detail work in the yoke. It just requires that many stitches. And she, this designer, has another pattern that kind of has a similar skull on it, but it's not the same. And I'm also a little bit worried hers is like super high contrast, so like bright, bright red. And this looked bright red online when I ordered it. It's Lima. Ta da! Which is an alpaca wool blend. Yeah, 65% wool, 35% alpaca. It's cheap, hence drops. Love it. Wool Warehouse, 10 out of 10. I've ordered from them three times. <laughs> and as of the recording of this podcast, all of their um, alpaca blend or 100% alpaca yarns are 40% off and they're already cheap. So I ordered 35 games. <laughs> Those are what I'm hoping come today. But anyway, so these two it's gonna be fine it's still it's not like it's not contrasty and probably I wouldn't like anything super red because I do get red in the face um but yeah cannot wait to start this I, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start it I did see some people said that there's after the yoke there's some body increases and they just left those out so I'll probably do that and I might make my sleeves a little bit wider so they're not so fitted against that I mean we'll see we'll see how I feel about it if I hate it, I'll just rip it out. It's the beauty of knitting, right? We're not wasting material. Just rip that sucker out. And I should be able to spit splice these. Yeah, since I started spit splicing, I'm like, I'm never going back to weaving in ends. Are you kidding me? It's great. So plan number one. Plan number two, I have already purchased this pattern. I don't think I love this yarn for it though. Again, it looked different online. It always does. I mean, it's just the nature of online ordering. Again with the Lima, Drops Lima, again. This is a DK weight yarn. This is going to be, I can't think of the name of it. It's right there on the tip of my tongue, it starts with an A. Anyways, put it up here. This is supposed to be that, and I don't know that this color is coming through very well. It is very blue. It's pretty, but I feel like this is just, a lot together. So maybe it's this that's throwing me off. Maybe this is too yellow. In the sample, woo, I'm eating alpaca. In the sample, they used what looks to be hand dyed yarns. Um, so there's some variegation in there, which I really think lends itself to that pattern. So I'm gonna hang on to this for a hot minute. I'm gonna think about this because think if I tone this down, if I can find, like, I feel like, ooh, like that looks better together than that. That's just too bright. But this is a fingering weight. Could hold it double. Eh. I'll have to think about it. I think about my life there. Because I have a lot of that color of palette, so that could actually work out. But we'll see. That's next on the list. Those are going to be great fall patterns, and I really want them for Halloween time. So as soon as the open glow is done, I'm going to start the, the bird skulls. I think they're birds. I'm pretty sure they're birds. Sure, animal skulls. And then figure this out. So there's that. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you guys is some yarn I dyed. So I've been thinking about dyeing yarn for a long time. Let me just keep comfy. 
been thinking about dyeing yarn for a long time. I don't know anything about it. I have no idea where to start. I've been watching Chem, Chem Dyes, I think, on YouTube. And she does a lot of, I'm still eating here, I need to put that away. She does a lot of like live streams and informational videos and she's really good. She's got a ton of stuff. So I've just been kind of idly watching her stuff. I ordered a Chicard starter set from Amazon. It's got pink, teal, yellow, and black. And from that, they kind of give you like a ratio amount to make all these different colors on the color wheel. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, but my parents found some, those restaurant pots that you see everybody dies in. They're the smaller ones are only probably that big. So I bought some mini skeins to like try out. So they were perfect for a mini skein, but they wouldn't fit a large skein very well. But anyways, they found that like in an auction so they got a whole box full of metal stuff for 10 bucks and gave me the pans out of it, which was awesome. Where did it go? Ah. So I bought some Swish and Hawthorne from Knit Picks, the berry yarn. And if you buy so many, you get a discount. So I bought like 15 or 20. And I haven't done, I've only done the one day of batches, but these were my first ones. Yay! Aren't they pretty? It's really interesting. It was a lot of fun to see how different materials take the same dye. So this was all in the same pot. This is the swish. So the swish didn't take um, this heel as well, which I thought was super interesting. This is 100% merino, I believe. Also, clearly I can't <laughs> roll things into a skein. Whoops. But the Hawthorne is stunningly gorgeous. This has an, um, some nylon content in it. Look at that. Oh, the depth of the color. I love this color. Love this color. This tealy bit. All right, don't look at me. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So I prefer the Hawthorne, the way that this takes the dye. It's just very, it's very bright. It's very variegated. Like I said, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. My dye was way too concentrated for what little bit was in the pot. <laughs> didn't have near enough water, whatever. It was just fun. And it's, I mean, I'll probably use this for color work. I mean, there's only 10 gram mini, so there's not a whole lot of it, um, especially since I only have one of the swish. I'll do color work, I'll do sock heels, I'll do something, I'm not sure yet. And then the other color uh, combo I did was this, and I love this. I like this, again, still like the Hawthorne better. I just think it takes it better. It must be that nylon content in it, but it's got some pinks, purples, down into this green, a little bit of yellow. It was really cool to see how, like, I started with, you know, you always see people just kind of pouring it into the pots. And then as the colors blended together, it made these really pretty tonals. I love it. Some places it didn't pick up as much. I'm totally fine with that. The swish came out a lot pinker, but still, I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. Beautiful. It was just fun. So if you've ever thought, oh boy, I'd love to try it. It was like 25 bucks for the starter set. It's going to last me for a very long time because you don't need very much. And you can use vinegar as your, like, there's a word for it, but it sets the color in it. I'm not up to date on my dyeing terminology, but the kit comes with um, some like acid flakes. So it didn't even smell bad. I thought my house would reek of like hot wool and acid. It really wasn't bad at all. It was just really fun. It was very fascinating. So that's, I think, all I'll have to share with you. I'm just looking at my mess as per usual. I did actually, let me take that back. I had some really old yarn that I also just tossed into the dye pots. Ta da! Isn't that neat? This was white. This stuff's probably, I'm not kidding you. It's probably 30 years old. It, I was in middle school and I was going to a knit night at our local library and there was a very elderly woman that taught the class and she had this kit for this god awful horrendous looking vest, <laughs> bless her heart. And she'd held onto it for a long time. And she gifted me the, the set and she was like, this is very expensive yarn. This is the, you know, I've held on to it because my husband bought it for me and he's passed and I'm not going to make it. It was like this whole thing. So I've never gotten rid of it and I've never used it because I'm not going to make that vest. It's really, it's like a patchwork. It was bad. It was very like 
early 80s, which is not my jam. It's cool if it's yours, but it's not mine. So anyways, I've just held on to it for all these years. She held on to it a long time. I have held on to it a long time. Don't know what I was going to do with it. It's still like a fingering weight, rustic-y kind of wool. I'm thinking this is going to make some bomb socks. So again, very interesting. Same types of colors, completely different result. I mean, I did have some just like plain blue, but look how much darker that came out. And then where they mix together. And what's really super interesting to me is that I also had from the same pack, because it's the weirdest sweater ever, because you have fingering weight, right? Then there's some fuzzy stuff in it. Then there's some worsted weight in it. Like, I just, I don't know what they were thinking. But yeah, so I just used all this as my like dye test. Look, this one came out super purple and dark blue. It's so crazy how, how they just, these were all together. Completely different looks. I just love it, it's so fascinating. I like this one. Really like that one, that dark greeny color into the purple. These are gonna make such cute socks. So that's the plan for that. I have, I just dried them and haven't done anything else with it. <laughs> I shouldn't mess with it too much. I'm for sure tangling it, but yeah, that's my dye experiment, have fun. So yeah, if you ever wanted to try it, just try it. What are you out? Not much. It's fun. It's a good way to spend a Saturday. And I'm going to make some socks that might strike up to be horrifically ugly. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty excited about it. <laughs> Nobody has to see them but me, right? So yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad I redid this. I feel a lot better about this. I feel, I feel like I'm in a much better headspace. Putting out positivity instead of negativity. I hope that you have a fabulous day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Find something fantastic to knit for yourself or a friend, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye for now.